trauma dumping. It's the latest slang term that's starting to gain a little too much traction, if you ask me. And it's especially being enforced by the toxic positivity crowd. Oh my God, well, tell you what, Miss Dirty Kirby, you know what we're not gonna do? We're not gonna talk about it in my chat. It's Friday, and that is a whole big bucket of bummer. So to keep you prepared and to help you avoid these situations, I'm going to let you know a little bit about trauma dumping, how it works, where it came from, what it actually means, and proper ways to vent that won't get you labeled as a trauma dumper. So what is the definition of trauma dumping then? Here's the thing. It's not an official term. What it is, is internet slang. So kind of like venting, uh, trauma dumping is when someone overshares their emotions or difficult things they're going through with others. But, and a big but here, is that trauma dumping involves doing that to an unsuspecting person or group and it's done in a completely unsolicited way, not the same as venting. And here's the thing, while you may think that some of these online groups are your safe tribe, just because you feel like they're your tribe, you really need to be careful with who you entrust your feelings to. Because a lot of people aren't good out there and they will take your thoughts and your feelings and they will use it against you for any reason they feel like. And this is why I made the video about this, is because obviously this is starting to be a problem. So there's this uh, Twitch streamer. He hadn't seen one of his normal chat people around in a while. And he asked, he asked in the middle of a stream, hey, where have you been? And then accuse them of trauma dumping. So we're going to look at this. So let's watch this. Oh my God. Well, tell you what, Miss Dirty Kirby, you know what we're not going to do? We're not going to talk about it in my chat because it's Friday and that is a whole big bucket of bummer. And I'm sorry for your loss, but we're not doing that in my f***ing chat. Editing Rachel here. So I didn't make that very clear. So this We Found the Body Twitch streamer guy had said, uh, hey, where have you been? And the person answered, Sorry, I've been gone. My grandma died. Period. Done. That's all she said. Now you know what's going to start this whole reaction. All right. The reason I'm making this video, the reason I'm warning you, is because of people like this. Toxically positive people that will jump on you and call what you're doing trauma dumping. Okay, Mr. Dirty Kirby, you said no, that's fine. You asked, so I told. Yeah, like what the heck? Oh, well, too bad I asked, but it's Friday and you're ruining the vibe. Because it's Friday and that is a whole big bucket of bummer. And I'm sorry for your loss, but we're not doing that in my mm. chat. And you're messing everything up. How dare you be sad about this thing that happened and mentioned it after I asked you. <sighs> Some people, I swear, are so selfish and narcissistic. Oh, I asked you where you were. Look, Mr. De Kirby. No, I didn't ask you to tell me the biggest bummer news in the world. I said, hey, what's up? How are you? Like, <laughs> and now you see why I worry about us, right? Because normal things to us are terrible to some people. So now you see why I'm like really putting this out there. A little bit of a lesson, Miss Nerdy Kirby. When something really, really bad is going on in your life and in a public forum, someone asks you, hey, what's up? How are you? There are two acceptable response, uh, responses. Good, and you know what? I'll make it through. That's it. And people wonder why we say, I'm fine, when we're not fine, all the time. It's because of people like this, 100%. Like, that's basically what she did. He asked where she was. Oh, sorry, this happened. Grandma died. Done. She didn't go venting. She didn't go pouring out her soul. She just explained it and was done. I mean, I can see why this guy thinks he doesn't want to hear about anyone else's life being terrible because look at all those beer cans in the background. I think someone doesn't want to hear about anyone else's life being bad because apparently theirs looks pretty bad to me. I mean, all those beer cans. Are you serious? Just unhappy people. Jeez. Going after other people. Where have you been? You don't need to tell them, well, my dog died my husband left me for a younger woman 
my house burnt down, and my car got stolen. Because it's like, oh, God. Poor you. Oh my gosh, poor you that you have to hear about that for just half a second. You poor thing having to go through listening to that for literally maybe five se five to ten seconds of your life. How do you put up with it? God, like, uh If someone asks, like, hey, what's up? Where have you been? And it's heavy, just be like, I had a bunch of going on, so I've been lying low for a little while. That's what she did! <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't scream into the microphone. That's what she did! That's totally what she did! She, she was like, this happened? Sorry, I've been out for a while. That was it! That was it! What? <laughs> oh, this guy. Oh, this guy. People like this. What the heck? Jerks. All I'm trying, I'm just subtly trying to tell you, unloading really heavy news in people's chats on Twitch is not, like, good etiquette. See, a lot of these creators just forget that these people aren't just usernames. They're real people. I mean, yeah, some of them are bots, but most of them are real people with real lives, with real emotions. And so this is also why you have to be real careful with who you trust. If you really want proof of this, listen to this guy's apology. I didn't unload on her because her mom died. Just because her mom died, you treat her like No! I treated her like because I don't like her. I unloaded on her because I've, ha I've told her before. This is, guys, if you didn't know this, it's not the first time she's come into my channel and God knows how many others to try to throw a f pity party. My reaction was wrong. Her doing that was wrong. We're both wrong. That's not an apology. Yeah, that was the apology. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, so now that I've kind of gotten that through, that you gotta be real careful who you trust with your thoughts and emotions, let's look into some trauma sharing tips because, yes, having a chronic illness, we're all going through trauma and we don't need any more from people like this. Okay, so next we're going to do some trauma sharing tips. Because let's face it, while you may want to vent, not everyone is in the right headspace to actually help or listen to you. And let's face it, those of us with chronic illness got a lot of trauma to deal with and to get off our chest sometimes. So the first suggestion I'm going to make for when you need to vent and you don't want it to be considered trauma dumping is number one, get permission from the person or group you are talking to. You could be like, hey, I'm going through some really bad stuff. Can you help? That opens it because sometimes, especially other chronic illness people like myself, if I'm having a bad day with my PTSD, sometimes I can't listen to it. And that's actually quite a lot of days for me. Um, I've been having anxiety issues lately. So some of you will notice the more uh, negative or situational uh, some of your comments are. It might take me a week to reply. That's why I kind of have to wait until I'm able to process that without it making my trigger worse, if that makes sense. So you can always ask and the person will, or group will let you know, yeah, of course, of course we're here for you. Um, that's one of the reasons actually why I wanted to make a community for us was because then you could put it out there and if I'm not able to help, someone else in the community can. I did make a Facebook and there's also a Discord no one's on, but the Facebook people are actually on. So uh, find those links in the description. And number two, uh, my suggestion for venting without it becoming trauma dumping is explain right away what you're hoping to get out of the conversation. What do I mean by that? Okay, what I mean is, are you looking for suggestions or help or... Do you just need to vent and you need an ear to listen and that's it? Because some people do need that. Can't you just listen instead of trying to fix everything? Whereas, like, I'm a fixer. So if I hear about an issue, I want to fix it. I want to jump in. I want to give you A, B, C, D options to fix it. And you know what? By telling the person outright what you're hoping for, you know, maybe I can't listen to you right now because I'm having issues but you say you just want to vent and that's all you want to do and all you want is an ear to hear it. I can do that. 
if I don't have to use my extra energy and because I'm not having a good day and all you want to do is vent, you don't want any suggestions, you want to, yeah, I'll be there for you. No problem. Because I know that now versus, hey, I need some suggestions. I need some help. I, I'm really confused on what to do about this. Uh, I might not be able to help you if I don't have the brain power, if I got the brain fog going. You know what I mean? Always, always spell out what you want out of the conversation. My third tip for sharing your trauma um, or venting is make sure you thank the person for their time. Thank you for listening to me. <sighs> now, this can be a little weird with like groups and stuff, but especially one-on-one, -on -one, especially one-on-one, -on -one, even if they just gave you an ear one-on-one, -on -one, make sure you thank them for their time and make sure you let them know how appreciative you are that they did that for you. I mean, let's face it, it's really hard to listen to negative stuff when you've been through a lot of negative stuff yourself. Ah, I can't take it anymore! Never assume somebody is in a good place. <sighs> that was hard. It might be hard for them to hear it, and so by them taking the time and energy to listen to your problems and even help fix them, they deserve to be acknowledged for that. It also helped make them more, you know, open to doing it again in the future. That is the positive reinforcement. And number four, as far as venting goes, as you just saw, who you think is your tribe online might not be trustworthy. Your family might not be trustworthy. Your friends might have proven untrustworthy. So who do you vent to? Tip number four, if you can't find anyone you trust enough to vent, go see a therapist. Because here's the thing, trauma dumping is not a clinical term. I know there was that stupid woman on TikTok about a year ago who was a therapist that was like, how dare you trauma dump? I'm pretty sure she's fired by now. If she's not, she should be. Isn't that a bit harsh, Your Honor? No! Because that's literally what they're there for. That's literally what they're getting paid for. So again, you get a bad doctor, fire them. Go find a better one. Who is this riling me up? <sighs> I'm usually a lover, not a fighter, but in your case, I'm willing to make an exception. It's also really important to know the difference between healthy venting and trauma dumping. Healthy venting allows an out to the conversation they're clear on whether or not they actually want a solution or whether or not they just want to gripe. They're considerate of the other person's time and whether or not they actually want to hear the problem. It tends to feel more beneficial overall. You tend to be more open to suggestions and you also try to stay on one topic. But then there's kind of the actual trauma dumping or as I like to call it, the energy vampire emotional dumping. I mean, this is when the person venting keeps on going, even if the listener doesn't want to talk and doesn't want to hear it. This is when the person venting only blames everyone else. None of it is their fault ever. The venter is also not open to any possible solutions. They just want to grape. They also repeat the same problems over and over and over. And you get a generally toxic feeling out of the person. And a lot of that's because they don't listen to anyone else's perspective. It's only about their perspective. They can be overwhelming the other person with what they're talking about and they don't care. They want to talk about it. They don't care about the other person's feelings that they're venting to at all. And these same people typically also kind of go over multiple unrelated topics. They'll jump from one to the other that have nothing to do with each other. And it's so exhausting listening to some of these people because it's mostly manipulation. Anyone that's been in a narcissistic relationship will recognize a lot of that. <laughs> so you're like, someone has come to me and they really need to vent and share their trauma. What do I do? Okay. First thing, you have to split off whether you're a problem solver or you're not a problem solver. I myself am a problem solver. If you're a problem solver, first thing you need to do, do not be afraid to ask right away if they are just venting or 
if they actually want suggestions and thoughts to try and help figure it out. You'd be surprised how often people just want to vent and respect what they say. If they don't want problem solving anything, don't give it to them. If you're not a problem solver or you're having a day where you just got too much brain fog for it, you need to set boundaries. So if you do want to talk to them and you do want to try, you can say, hey, I wish I could help, but I don't think I have any answers for you. But I'll do my best to listen if you think it'll help. I've been told I'm a good listener. And if you're kind of just frazzled and you're not able to help them and they really need to vent and you don't want to listen to it and you don't want to talk at that point, what you can do is you can say, you know, that's really out of my experience range. It might help if you find a therapist that's specially trained in this. Or you can just be like, you know what, I cannot talk about this subject right now. I am so sorry. Setting boundaries is the most important thing. Don't push yourself to do things you're not comfortable to do. I'm a textbook people pleaser. I have a serious problem. Now, trauma dumping is absolutely crazy with how common it's getting. And yet at the same time, how things that have nothing to do with trauma dumping are being called trauma dumping. But hopefully this helped you figure it out and check out some other videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on surviving, my friends.